my um, clapperboard. <laughs> of course. Yes. Give myself to <laughs> And we're going to the dump. We're going to the dump. Uh, Excellent. Yes. With, with not a huge amount of... Not a huge amount of... I kept the car especially <laughs> empty. But... Uh, Vital it, to get rid of. It would be difficult for me to do this on my bike. So far, in the in the two or three years I've lived without a car, I've rented one car once. Wow. That's um, good. I should have done it twice. There was one time where I was really, really regretting not having rented a car. But, but I, I did I did ask the... Because there's a lot of bicycling questions. I did ask the, the, the Twitter sphere. The, the Twitter sphere. Yes. You know, well, because normally I don't do that, but I've sort of done it once or twice. Well, I was like, aware because I could see that you'd done you it because I could see the at Dave Norman thing yes, coming up. Yeah. And then I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll try not to read those yes, because well, I kind of read. I diligently really printed them out and along with my rubbish <laughs> left them at home. Okay. So I haven't got any of them. But I know, but I know there was one about you doing a tour. I should have read them then. Yes. <laughs> I should have. I thought I was being really good for you. Yeah. No, I won't. I won't spoil it. Because he's doing your research really carefully. Yeah. Which I was in a really crap way. But I mean, I but I can remember some of them because the ones okay. about the cycling tour. You don't. Yes. Want. But are you going to do that? That is. Yeah, yeah. I was planning to do a big bike ride. No gigs, nothing. Nothing right, to, to do with it. To I was do just planning to do a big yeah. bike ride for myself. And originally, um, somebody had said something about Lands End to John O'Groats. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, I'll do that. And I did no research or planning. I thought, actually, I just kind of really enjoyed telling people I was right. doing Lands End to John O'Groats. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, it, people react in a really, wow. Really? That's oh god! Right. Right. And I was really enjoying yeah. that yeah. kind of you know without <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, Lens it, John Cruz. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then I looked into it and, and thought oh, I don't want to do land into John Cruz because it's it's a bit well. There's a company who 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 sort of have a signpost at either end that they'll charge you money to have your photo taken in front of and and they own both signposts at both ends and there's a there's a whole network of information right. and advice and there's a right. route that's kind of preordained and you do this and I thought. As, it, as challenging as that would be, it, it wouldn't feel very um, mine no, to be no. the 10,000th person yeah, to travel the from London to whatever, whatever, whatever yeah. it happens to be. You know, I just thought, oh, that's not my like, good. And when I looked those two up, I looked up where is the most southern and where is the most northern, um, I also I found myself on a Wikipedia page which also told me the most eastern and most western. Right. And you go, oh, well, that's irresistible now, isn't it? <laughs> You've got to do that. Um, but I wasn't. I still wasn't planning on doing gigs. Right. right. It was just a thing. I was like, okay, I'll do that bike ride. And then secretly, I'd sort of got into doing stand up again. Right. Which I hadn't done for about eight years. Had you not? Oh no, right. No. I was just really. I was. I was doing it in secret and enjoying it. <laughs> and then. Stand up. Well, it, it was like doing it as a hobby again. You right. know, like when yeah. you start. Yeah. You know. It's much more fun. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. Absolutely. I want to say secret. I mean, obviously, you know, there were audiences you found, and otherwise you're doing it by yourself. Yes. Or you're doing it in a mask or something. I'm, I have you know to I mean? say, I have done that. I've done them, some of my best gigs on really? my own, <laughs> okay. in front of a mirror, you know. Uh, well, closed. At the end of a festival, we've all done that. Yes! <laughs> in some way. <laughs> but um, uh, then basically, it sort of, uh, word got out to people, like my manager and, the, and whatever, and they were like, well, why, why aren't you touring? Yeah. And how you should do a tour in the autumn. I said, oh, I can't, I'm doing this bike ride. And at that moment, we're looking at you and yeah. hang on a minute, <laughs> it just got to fucking sell that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's become that now. Wow. So, um, but I mean, are you, so you'll go all right. I mean, that, so the idea, yeah, it's a, uh, it's around Britain from too. from south to east to west to north. Wow. Um, by bike with a gig every night. Wow. And you've got you've worked because I mean, how far will you average in a day then? Uh, it's 50, mm. 40 to sixty miles. Bloody hell! I mean, that's a. I mean, because I, I did do serious. You know, I'm proud of my machismo when really. yeah. it comes to cycling. And I did 90 miles, which was the most I ever did in a yeah, day. Yeah. And I was in a total state at the end of that. Right, I was okay. like, 60 miles, if you're, if you're I've done regular, then 60 miles is it's still a long day. I've done riding, 50 and 60, and, yeah. and I've sort of done it, and right. that's okay. But yeah. what you can't prepare for is doing it 33 days on the trot. So you don't have a day off in that? You're no, doing it every no, day? No, it's every, it's every oh, day man. for a month and a bit. Yeah. Um, I wow. did as a, a training ride recently do, uh, I did three days of 90 miles a day. Wow. Um, wow. Just, which is more than I'm going to have to do on the yes, tour, yeah. because I can't do 30 days of training back no. to back. I thought I'll, I'll do something more. Yeah. Um, I, bet I reckon you'll get really into it, and you'll yeah, occasionally so. have a day where, just because of the logistics, it's only 35 miles. Yeah, yeah. Go, no, no, there are, there are a few days where it's like yeah, uh, much less. 20 to 30 or something. Yeah. Partly because of gigs, actually, because you get through this kind of densely packed part of Britain. Yes. And and you don't have to go very far to get a major town where you yeah. can do a sensible gig. Yeah. And then later on, I'm doing 
like long 70 miles to find a town with 30 people yes. and I was going to get to three crofters, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's been that is going to be ridiculous. extraordinary. And are you going to be able to record any of it in any modern technological way or is it, um, or just by writing? And I don't know. I've, I've, I've been offered a documentary and I've turned it down. Right. Because I don't want to make it that much harder for myself. Yes, and because it will do. Yeah. Like, you, know, you know if you do a documentary, you always say, well, you didn't quite get you as you came up that mountain. Yeah. And you go back down and do it. You know like when you cut off, off and yeah. the whole of your arm yeah. got scraped. It's, just, it's a nightmare. Uh, so <laughs> at the moment, I've turned that down. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, let's annoy oh. these drivers and go straight on. OK. We've I'll just, just huge I'll burn them off yeah. with this high-speed vehicle. <laughs> yeah, okay. Can we do it? Yes, we can. You can. Well done. Sorry. <laughs> my, my bad. Well, there's and no I, need to get upset, because yes. I've gone right past you. Yes. Do I do the, this? Uh, no, no, you just go straight on. I, I, as I looked at that, I realised. Right. Richard, if I was just doing it as a bike ride, I'd be um, you know, packing really lightly and sort of yes. wearing one and washing one and yeah, things. Yeah, so you've got right, yeah. Actually, well, that, that means I'm going to get David Cameron with it and, and have a man in a van. Yes. yes. But actually, the heat, there's stuff that I have to have for the gigs, which right. I wouldn't have to have for the ride. Right. And the time I'm going to spend on the gigs is the time you would spend washing your clothes and yeah. sorting yourself out and yeah. things, I think, sod it, the, the tour has to now take care of that. Right, oh, so, so you, do, you do have a David Cameron So they will, they're going to have to be, I think. I just can't see any other way of doing it. So that, I think it should be a Range Rover. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. And, and I've, only, uh, I've only just reached that kind of confessional stage where I can sort of talk about this. Um, uh, and I don't know if this ever affected you uh, when you did your 90 miles or something, but my 270 miles, um, I suffered for 11 days after it uh, with numb penis syndrome. That, that was the most common question on Twitter. Really? That, 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 really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Can you ask him about numb penis? Oh, I totally know what you mean. Um, and, and it scared the life yeah. out of me, and I thought, I, I've committed to this tour yeah. three days I mean, to let it, me uh, take a right yeah, Right. It might be worth trying out some other saddles. It's I have, I've changed the saddle right, already. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had uh, 11 days of, of numbing, much so. reduced sensation. Wow. Um, that is quite, you, de you definitely have kinked a nerve somewhere. Yeah, yeah, there. absolutely. Right. And, and I've done some reading on it since, obviously. Yeah. Uh, as you would. Um, and 11 days of absolutely being terrified that I, it was going to be more permanent. Right. Because I was thinking, you know, three days of riding, maybe three days later it'll be okay. Yeah, well, that was quite, um, no, that is quite a long time. But that's, no. that's a long time. So you didn't have any direct medical intervention? I mean, uh, no, no, right. no, no, no. I, 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 mean, I did a thing that's right in my lip and it's fine. <laughs> and, and I've changed my saddle and had to, you know, the position. And what it is, is partly the, um, like a, an athlete takes their, all their weight on their legs almost yeah. the whole time. Yes. And because I'm not an athlete and I'm not used to doing 90 miles, yeah. I had sort of sat back and, and let the, the saddle take my weight. Yes. And it was a little thin saddle, and right. basically uh, <laughs> behind your, your penis continues into the body, and the yeah. blood is all channeled through that yeah. small section, and, and I'd obviously crush some nerve. Yeah. Do I uh, go over the, the left? Keep to the left. Keep to the left. left. So now, no, straight, straight on here. Straight on here, okay. and then at the next left, I think. But that is it. No, it is it? It's such a. It's such a I'm looking forward adventure. to it. I mean, I'm it's a brilliant to thing to do, isn't it? Because I mean, there's so many people just do a tour or yeah, yeah. So you know, left here. And the travelling is always the is the grim bit. Well, listen, I mean, other, other comics are, are jealous when they see the schedule because they go, "Wow, you're up, you're only going 50 miles." Yeah. From gig to gig, and then we don't right here. Uh, and then they realise I'm cycling, and they're not jealous anymore. <laughs> um, because normally you're touring, you're sort of Edinburgh one night, Southampton, then Glasgow, then yeah. Portsmouth, because... So where yeah, do we it's, go? It's a, oh, we got there. Bit, yeah. We're very close, you can see the dome across there. Right. So we're, we're, it's like, just somewhere in here? Yeah, anywhere you can. All right, OK. It was very exciting when I turned up on my bike with a trolley, with like a 28-inch old television, one of the proper packet oh, yeah, rack yeah. tube things on the back. The guy's face who works there when I turned up with that was just beautiful. I couldn't have been more hippie <laughs> cycling to throw away a telly. <laughs> it's just, perfect, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it just couldn't believe me. And it was such a joy going home without that weight behind oh, me as well. The, the, cause the, the, the other questions which reminded yes. me of it, which is so it's a sort of cheap way of doing research, is asking yeah. Twitterers to yeah, yeah. ask the questions. But the genius show, I mean, that would, there were some really weird but annoyingly clever yes. things that came out yeah, of that. Yeah. We sort of, very little that could get on Dragon's Den would ever get on us. <laughs> Um, 
He's going to make you a fortune. Yeah. Take it somewhere take else it and make you a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> There's normally sort of a flawed logic to, yeah. to the ones on ours. But there is only a, a kind of logic underpinning them as well. Yeah. Which I like. Um, but I love that way that you do, because I'm I've always found there was an, an element of audience participation which I always found abrasive and difficult and I didn't I never yeah. did it did and you know, you know well no well, no I mean I talk I talked to them and if they had, had a witty yeah. thing I would go with it it wasn't like I said no don't say anything. The first, no heckling, did, but, so did you do stand up proper yeah but not for long because the first thing I saw you do I was in the audience in Edinburgh and I saw you and Alan Cumming did you do a play with Alan no, no. What was a, did, you did a play I, oh no I tell you who it was uh, yes uh, with John Mackay John Mackay that's a, it screenwriter yes. now but um, right yes um, uh, Onan the, the or Onan about a left wing porn yeah which was, which was which was a brilliant play well, it was pressing and I wasn't absolutely it, then loved it. I mean, it was, it was, yeah, it was yeah. pre lads mags yeah so. absolutely um, oh great oh thank you no I mean I really enjoyed that we had great fun doing and that. so I always had you pegged as an actor yeah well I mean I suppose for the for about three years before I did that I'd been doing quite regular stand-up right. but not not very well and I mean the, the what finished me off was uh, the first one of the first gigs Eddie Izzard ever did like his first or second gig I was on with him in um, somewhere in, out, out of London at a yeah. little art centre and it was basically just the two of us and it was yeah. two you know white middle class men in their thirties who muttered and mumbled and couldn't remember their lines and couldn't remember their jokes <laughs> and had quite crap haircuts and one of them was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think he did it. He did it at my university around that time. Right. When I was in the audience for that as well. Yeah, because he would. I mean, this would be in like the late, mid to late eighties. I mean, like early, or oh, really? Okay, 80, no, 80, no, it was like much that. later when I saw right. him then. So it was quite a few years later that he finally kind of checked. You know, he'd made yeah. the really big leap. But I mean, he was. And I drove him back home then. I mean, I really want to carpool him again because I've done him once. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then there's more to Eddie. There's, yeah. <laughs> but he was, uh, but that went, on that drive home, I said, I'm just not going to do it anymore. I can't do it. You know, I forgot all my jokes and I mumbled right. and they didn't laugh. Right. And you forgot all your jokes and you mumbled and they did. Maybe they just thought his whole thing was like a, a really good piss take of you. Because, well, yeah, because I did, did maybe. one first. Yeah, maybe. No, I think I went on after him. All right, in which case, he killed you. That was what was really cruel. To, I was, to make that yeah, work. I was it? headlining. Yeah. <laughs> Which just yeah. shows, which shows the point of our careers. But then I thought, but maybe had you gone in in the other order, may, you know, maybe it would have been different, it. and he would have come on, and they would have yeah. gone, oh, not another mumbler, yeah. and they would have yeah. not gone with him. You don't know. No, you it's never always, know, do you? Because I, I, I did stand up for ages, and then I stopped and started doing these kind of one man shows, which, which weren't stand up, based, which were different, basically. You know, it's, I'll tell one story for ninety minutes, right, instead of a series of jokes. And there would be no jokes in it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and but that meant because there were 90-minute shows, I couldn't do 20 minutes of it anyway. It wouldn't make yes, any sense. Yes. Yes. So I was kind of off the circuit, and I, yeah. I wasn't backstage mixing with other people. Yeah. Um, and I haven't, I haven't done that for five years, and I haven't done stand-up for eight. Right. Um, and one of the things I missed was that kind of backstage thing. Yeah. And that, no, no, I love that. Yeah. Seeing yeah. different people, and I did a run in, in New York ages ago. For what, meant to be six weeks and it became three months. Wow! And it was really lonely. Right. And then well, uh, presumably, it, to, for it to extend like that, it was, it was successful going well. as a show. Yeah, yeah. Too. It was going right. well, but it was lonely. Um, yeah. I was coming. I love New York, and it, it wasn't sort of unhappy living there at no. all. Um, but it was a long time, and but the hours backstage before the show were the worst part. Right. Of it. Yeah. Just say, oh, yeah. bloody hell! Here we go again. Yeah. And then over Christmas, they had two venues inside this theatre. And over Christmas, they brought in um, a drag act, Kiki and Herb, right. who uh, did this kind of camp cabaret right. over the Christmas period. And suddenly, going to work was a joy. Right, because there because was people the there. three of us would sit around and chat yeah. for an hour before our shows yeah. and have a cup of tea together. Yeah. And they were really lovely, funny guys. Right. And and it changed the job yeah. completely. Isn't it weird. And from this thing of, of being, oh, here we go yeah. again. Because yeah. the hour and a half on stage for me was fun. Yes. It was the hour and a half before, before the show, where well, yeah. you have to be there. Yeah. Um, but there are loads of these gigs out of London where one of the comics, one of the conditions is, can drive. <laughs> and there's <laughs> kind of lift share arrangement that goes right. on that the promoter sort of sets up. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, that's very sensible. And I'm sure there's, it makes people suspicious that they're, does he really want me? Yes. <laughs> am I actually good enough for this gig or am I just the only one who can drive? <laughs> 
I can open, open the that, show, do my ten minutes, and then yeah. wait in the car yeah. for the really funny ones. The, the, the Gorman thing, which I've only... I mean, I love that, because it was so... so you, uh, take a right at the lights. So quirky and unique. But, I mean, it was just that... But then it is... Every now and then, I'll get a Robert Llewellyn emailing yes. me. Because there's one in Washington, D.C. And, I th and every time that happens, I think of you. And I apologise. No, no, I don't want to go around the world and find every Robert Llewellyn. Well, like, is that weird? Because it's that, I'm very proud of it, but it, it is going to follow me I forever. Think it, yeah, that's and it the becomes problem, that, yeah. that sort of thing. And I did. Because a lot of people said, are you still in touch with all the Dave Gormans you met? There's actually a couple I'm still friends with. Right. Um, the only thing I've ever turned down professionally that I've regretted. You turn some things down, you, think, you yeah. never hear them again or yeah. whatever. There's one thing I've turned down that I've lived to regret. And it was the first series of Who Do You Think You Are? Oh, wow. Wow. When it, so you hadn't seen any I hadn't of it before. Seen it. Yeah. And, and I'm not big enough to be asked to do it again now. Yeah. You know, oh. and it was their first series and, yeah. and they were fishing around. Yeah. And now I think, oh, my parents would have loved it if I'd done yeah. it. I'd have learned something. It would have been really exciting. Yeah. And it's such a good quality show as yeah, well. It's it isn't tabloidy. No. It's got a really nice uh, feel to it. It would have been a really good learning experience and, yeah. and my family would have been proud of it and the rest of it. And yeah. I wish I'd done it. Yeah. And the reason I turned it down is I had a policy, and I still have a policy, I turned down everything that relates to Ido Gorman. I've turned down merchandise, t-shirts, right. all sorts of money-making things, right. turned down small parts in films, and because it's been relating to that. Related to that, to that yeah. And anything that is be the namesake guy, I turn it down. I'm not because I'm not proud of the show, just because I don't want to peg myself into a corner yeah. as yeah. that guy. Yeah. This will mean well, nothing to people watching on the uh, on camera. Then, no, well they can't. They because I've yes, they they can see a little bit of it out of there. But believe me, viewers, isn't it absolutely stunning? Though? It's just it's beautiful. It's what terraced. It's what house. It's what, how everyone should live. Yes, yeah, yeah. If you're living in a city in yeah. condensed housing, you should live somewhere like this. How? Because it was built for normal people, wasn't it? Yeah. And it wasn't a posh street. Ever. No, no, no. But it is now. In, yeah, in the I bet it it's is. kind of regarded. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know what area we're in. This is Cypress, Bethel Green. Cypress Street E2. Right? Yeah. No, it, I just think it's a beautiful little street. Yeah. I think for the, for a street to have wow. its own little war memorial. Yeah. And it's been and maintained also, it's, for it's the entire time. The, it it survived the Blitz as well. Because I mean, yeah, this yeah. area was bombed to. Buggery, yeah, well, you, the modern flats at the end here is where the bomb fell. Right. And actually, beyond those flats, there's another little cypress street, ah, um, which is a bit of a grotty one. Right. This sort of, it, it's not as beautiful as this. Yeah. But you're not from London originally. No, from, no, no. You're no. from West Midlands. West Midlands. Stafford. Stafford. Yeah. Well, that was it. I didn't, yes, I didn't mean to make that. <laughs> That's sorry, I was concentrating on <laughs> okay. out It's from Stafford. West right. Midlands. End that right. subject. <laughs> I do know where Stafford is. It's not a yeah. It's not a town most people stop at. <laughs> you know, there's nothing. There's no way of replacing local knowledge. No. It's just so much more efficient. It's so much nicer to cycle. You just know what you're doing. Yes. You, like an instinct helps and all of that. And that made me think I could do with some help. Yeah. I'd much prefer. Do you know your way? Have you ever cycled from Leicester to Stoke before? Do you know right. what you're doing? Yes. Do you want to be in charge? Right. And actually get I'll some like, human them. sat -navs. Yeah. And if I can get 33 individuals to, be, to volunteer I mean, to, yeah. to guide me, yeah. then I'm not responsible for their safety, they are. And and I get all that local knowledge, yeah. and I get all those little shortcuts little, and you'll that see come my in, and, and I'm hoping to... I haven't actually done anything to actually request that yet. Right. So uh, this might be my first request, if you know my tour dates and you know your route from uh, when any you, of the AWs. When do you start? Uh, in, in end the, of in August. The, oh, right. It's like oh, two so days time. of August and then all of September. Right. So I did uh, uh, a book reading in Hay on Wye. Right. Uh, at the, well, recently uh, at the, uh, at the, yeah, the, at the festival, festival yeah. last week. I had a really long day. It was one of those days I got picked up in a car at sort of eight in the morning and I got delivered home again at half past twelve at night. Right. Yeah. And literally, I think there was one fifty-minute time where I, I wasn't working right. in, in the whole day. You know, I was yeah. either in the car or working. Or work, yeah. And I got home and I, I, the next morning, whatever, I was looking at Twitter and somebody, my event was at seven and at sort of like five to seven, someone's on Twitter saying, I'm in the third row. I don't, I can't work out why he isn't tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm getting ready to go on stage yeah. and do a book reading. Yeah. I'm sort of God, he's like, so mean and selfish, yeah. he's not even tweeting now. And, and the need <laughs> to be tweeting constantly, I don't kind of no. get. I sort of think, like, the idea of tweeting through events. <laughs> While you're on stage. No, shouldn't, shouldn't it be the event? <laughs> And I certainly did go through a, a, a you know, a, 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 in they were sort of in my mid Twitter career, obsessive over Twitter. <laughs> I've, I've, I've weaned myself off now. Yeah, yeah. I just, 
<laughs> Just the phrase Twitter career. Yeah. <laughs> it is worrying. At some point, maybe engage in the thing you're at rather than. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, there's that thing where um, uh, in war zones, cameramen get shot because they forget their air. Because right. they're viewing it through a lens. They're looking through a lens, right, and they stand and in it, the way. And it makes you feel distant, yeah. and it makes you feel apart from it. So the news reporter hears bullets and they dive for cover. Yes. And the cameraman hears goes, bullets and look, what's that? Someone's shooting. Oh, look at that. It looks, oh, it's like a film. Yeah. And, and they get shot. Yeah. And, and they get hurt more than others. Do, is that in, statistically? I think so, right. yeah. yeah. I, I don't think I'm making right. that up. No. Is, are you not you, really you there? You disengage yeah. in a weird way yeah. and make yourself no longer a participant. Yes. There's a wedding video from years ago uh, that I've, I've seen where I think it was my stepdad was filming and there's a moment outside the church where he pans round and there's somebody else who's also videoing panning round and there's just two video cameras staring at each other. You know there's a, a, an identical yeah. <laughs> a wedding video being yeah. viewed by somebody Going else. The other way. Yeah. And you just go, you're both having this really weird artificial experience yeah, at this moment. Not really time. at the wedding. Yeah, yeah. My only justification is that, you know, having worked in television for 20 something years, which was completely controlled by a, a higher authority. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there, there is a great, I mean, I'm having an enormous amount of fun not making stuff that isn't yeah, yeah. controlled by then. And actually, it's much more fun to do, to do this than yeah, yeah. to record a wedding. <laughs> Well, all right, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although, you know, well, I've, I've been to some good weddings. <laughs> <laughs>